Nobody likes taxes, and there's nothing wrong with using a sharp pencil to pay as little as possible. But some Canadian corporations and some wealthy individuals are taking that to the extreme, using tax havens and loopholes to avoid paying huge amounts. We're talking about tens of billions of dollars every year in unpaid taxes. And as Alan Carter reports, cash-strapped governments are doing little about it. This empty factory in suburban Montreal used to die close. Six years ago, the factory was shut down and its production moved to Latin America, leaving 75 employees jobless. Jerry Boutin was the union rep at the plant back then. What was the impact on the factory floor when the word came in that it was shutting down for good? First of all, you have always a group of employees that they don't believe that. They don't believe that, and they said, no, no, they won't close. There was too many customers, there were too many contracts. They weren't making money, that's for sure. The factory was owned by Gildan Activewear, one of the largest clothes manufacturers in the world. A Canadian company based in Montreal, Gildan makes things like T-shirts and sweatshirts. The plant was the last one it ran in Canada. Gildan moved all its operations to Latin America to cut labor costs. But labor wasn't the only cost Gildan saved by shifting production out of Canada. Alan Mack, a Toronto forensic accountant, showed us. Let's take a look at this 2012 number here because you're seeing income before taxes, $144 million. That's right. That's what the figures show. Last year, Gildan earned a profit of $144 million. And in terms of tax, what did they pay? Well, they received a credit of $4 million. They paid nothing, they got money back? Yes. Either they've got money back or they're expecting to recover money. This is a Canadian company with $144 million worth of earnings. Of profit. Of tax. profit. Yes. Paying zero tax. Not only not, are they not paying, they're getting money back from somewhere else. How does that possibly make sense in any world? They've got very good accounts or lawyers. In fact, Gildan has not paid one cent of corporate taxes in Canada over the past four years while bringing up profits as high as $224 million. We took that news to former union rep Jerry Boutin. The small companies in the province of Quebec or in the city of Montreal, they have to pay taxes, we have to pay taxes, and this big, 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 big owner that decide to hire people, make them work, and they don't pay tax. Companies like Gildan know that by moving factories overseas and using offshore tax havens and loopholes, they can chop their tax bill enormously. And it's all perfectly legal. So it's a horrendous problem. Percy Down is a Canadian senator who has focused on the offshore tax evasion and avoidance issue. Programs are being cut because we don't have the revenue. The deficit uh, is high. If we collected what we're owed to the government of Canada, there'd be no deficit. As much as $32 trillion is hidden by corporations and the wealthy in more than 30 offshore tax havens. In Canada, it means billions in uncollected tax every year. And that's revenue lost to both federal and provincial governments. Dennis Howlett is executive director of Canadians for Tax Fairness, an Ottawa-based NGO that seeks a progressive tax system. Our own estimates would lead us to conclude Canada is losing at least $7.8 billion a year and probably more like um, 10 or 20 billion a year. The world found out just how much money high profile companies can save when Apple was found to have parked $102 billion in offshore havens while only paying $14 billion in U.S. federal taxes. Canadian companies are just as aggressive as Apple, at least many Canadian large multinationals are. Arthur Cofield is a professor of tax law at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. In defense of these uh, Canadian multinationals, the Income Tax Act here in Canada absolutely permits these sorts of offshore uh, tax strategies. Those strategies mean if a Canadian company sets up a factory or subsidiary in a foreign country, they can deduct profits earned overseas from their tax bill back in Canada. The Toronto Dominion Bank does it. TD made $6.5 billion in profit last year. But because of overseas profits, it cut its tax rate to 15%, 
almost half the Canadian tax rate. That is an enormous savings. And if you take that in terms of real money, $481 million. That's not loose change. No, sir, it isn't. In fact, one year, when the corporate tax rate was almost 32%, TD paid only 7.6% in tax in Canada. How is it possible that a corporation of that size, making that kind of money, is uh, able to do that? I think the answer here is quite simply that they received a nearly 50% reduction simply because they have conducted operations outside of Canada. Gildan, the Montreal clothing manufacturing company that saved tax money by moving factories offshore, was once, ironically, bailed out by the very union workers it later laid off to shut its doors in Canada. And they did get a loan from the Fonds Solidarité, which actually is money from the workers. Bob Bouvier is the president of Teamsters Canada that represented Gildan workers before the company closed its factories here. When a company went to Solidarity Fund, it was normally because the bank would loan them because they thought it was too risky. So they took the money from the unions, unions. and then what happened next? Well, they straightened up their operation, probably cleaned their books or whatever it was. But a bailout wasn't the only help Gildan got. Right up until it moved its Canadian production overseas, the company was receiving government subsidies, at least $2.3 million worth in total. Yet despite this help from unions and Canadian taxpayers, Gildan moved its operations out of Canada and stopped paying corporate taxes here. If you were in charge of business, would you not employ that same strategy? If I were strictly greedy and looking for money, oh, this is probably what I would do. What's more, complaints began to emerge about the low pay and poor treatment of Gildan's workers in its factories in Honduras and Mexico. When we first investigated them 10 years ago, we found all sorts of abuses present, pregnancy testing for female workers. We found uh, people getting fired and blacklisted for trying to organize unions. Kevin Thomas is a director of the Maquila Solidarity Network, a labor rights group that investigates working conditions in the textile industry. Would you be surprised if I told you that Gildan paid no Canadian tax last year? I would be surprised because uh, they're a very profitable company. We wanted to ask Gildan officials about their tax situation, but they declined our request for an on-camera interview and issued a statement instead, saying the company abides by all applicable tax laws. They also said they pay back loans received from Quebec's labor movement, that they move their plants overseas in order to stay competitive in their industry, and have a socially responsible record of treating their overseas workforce. Companies don't even have to leave Canada to take advantage of tax havens. Take Cirque du Soleil, the Canadian company famous for acrobatics on stage, jumps through a tax loophole overseas. On the second floor of this obscure office building in sleepy Luxembourg are the offices of a Cirque du Soleil subsidiary. It's so low key, Cirque's name isn't on the exterior, just a little sign in the foyer. Cirque registers many of its trademarks at this office in the low tax haven of Luxembourg. Bernard Cola, a Montreal-based trademarks lawyer, explains why. Why would Cirque du Soleil have their trademark registered in Luxembourg? If the trademarks are in Luxembourg, then you will pay less taxes on the revenues generated by the trademark. We can't tell you how much Cirque saves because as a private company, it doesn't have to divulge tax information. But Kola says it could be millions. What kind of savings are they looking at in terms of taxes in Canada? Here in Canada, companies are taxed, I think, 28% or something like this. And uh, let's say in Luxembourg, it's 2%. So if uh, you earn $100,000 or a million, then 28% uh, will be taxed here and 2% will be taxed over there. This is all legal. Yes. Next, the government's dismal record for going after tax cheats. The offshore and taxation lobby is the most powerful in this country. In the real-life game of business, billions of Canadian dollars are illegally hidden in offshore tax havens around the world or legally avoided by using loopholes. Yet Diane Francis, business columnist with the Financial Post, says there's little political will to pursue the money or change the laws. There's a powerful group of people who don't want this to change. 
Francis says former Prime Minister Paul Martin Jr.'s family owned Canada steamship lines, with many of its subsidiaries registered in Barbados, is an example. While he was in government as a Liberal cabinet minister, a treaty was negotiated that exempts that shipping company from paying taxes. No self-respecting country in the world would do that. While the government claims it takes offshore tax evasion seriously, Francis is skeptical. Why does Canada not have the political will? Because the offshore and taxation lobby is the most powerful in this country. Just how powerful a lobby became clear in 2006. That year, a former employee of a European bank released a list that showed 106 Canadians hid $100 million in Liechtenstein with a tax debt owing of $22 million. Two years later, Senator Percy Down discovered only $8 million in taxable income has been returned to Canada. But the intriguing part for me is not one person has been charged. Not well, one person? Not one person. And, and I'm not familiar in, with a world where somebody pays back $8 million, but no offense has been committed and no charges have been laid. According to Down, Canada has a dismal record of getting offshore tax cheats. Instead of tracking down money offshore, he says the government goes after the low-hanging fruit. It's much easier to go after average Canadians who have their banking here, who tried to not pay their fair share of taxes, than it is to go after very rich Canadians who have accountants and other professionals to help them not only move the money offshore, but defend them when questioned. And now there are even fewer tax officials to track down offshore funds. Over the past year, 3,000 Canada Revenue Agency employees were let go. The agency's budget is also being slashed by almost $260 million in the next few years. You have written in the past, though, that it is a relatively toothless organization when it comes to getting offshore money. Well, it's toothless because the government won't give them the mandate. In Greece, Roiled by political turmoil in recent years, tax evasion is at the heart of the economic crisis. By 2010, the country had accumulated a $1.2 trillion debt, while at the same time, tax evasion was running rampant. In fact, Greeks only pay an estimated one-third of tax they actually owe, with an estimated $74 billion not being collected, including billions hidden in offshore tax havens. Euclid Sakalotos is a Greek economist and opposition member of parliament. We now reckon that there were about 15 to 20,000 offshore accounts in Greece, and the government recently said that it had investigated something like 60 of those. When the economic crisis hit in 2009, the Greek government imposed austerity measures and began selling state assets. Cuts so deep, they led to riots. <laughs> The austerity programs have had devastating effects on, on Greek society. It's not just uh, people who are unemployed, it's not just people who haven't got any access to income, it's people now who've lost their job and are uninsured so they haven't got access to, to medical facilities. Despite upheaval over massive cuts and austerity measures, the government refusal to chase after offshore tax evaders remains steadfast according to one of Greece's most famous journalists. Costas Vaxavenis is editor of Hot Doc, an investigative magazine he runs from this small house in a suburb of Athens. Last year, Vaxavenis was dramatically arrested by Greek police. Με συνέλαβα μια ομάδα από 50 αστυνομικούς μετά που παρακολούθησα το τηλεφώνο μου σαν να ήμουν ο μεγαλύτερος εγκληματίας. His crime, Vaxavenis published a list of more than 2,000 Greeks who had hidden money offshore in Switzerland. Many powerful and prominent members of Greek's political and business elite were on the list. Ένας πρώην δικαστικός και τώρα γενικός γραμματέας του Υπουργείου Δημόσιας Τάξης είναι στη λίστα. It turns out Greek government officials already had the list two years before Vaxavenis published it, given to them by members of the French government. But they had buried it, and the names. Instead of pursuing the tax evaders for millions in unpaid tax owed, the government took Vaxavenis to court for publishing the list. 
It lost the case against him last year, but immediately laid new charges, and he goes on trial this fall. Νομίζω ότι ε, αν πρέπει να μιλήσουμε για κλέφτε ή για αυτού που φοροδιαφεύγουν, πρέπει πρώτα να βάλουμε το πολιτικό σύστημα μέσα. Today, Greece is in its sixth year of recession, with its economy due to contract by nearly 4%. Unemployment is now at 27%. That comes up to sort of 1.7 million people. There is no sign that that's being reduced. The, the number of children in households below the poverty line is, is approaching 30 to 35%. Despite its crushing debt, the Greek government has done little, according to Sakalatos, to collect money from tax havens. Even the IMF who does not usually bat for the poor people, has consistently said that they don't trust the Greek governments to do something about tax evasion and, and tax avoid, uh, avoidance. Unrest and riots in Greece might seem a long way off in Canada, but it could serve as a cautionary tale. What does it all really mean at the end of the day? It means Canada is missing billions of dollars that we should have in our economy. It means that the government lacks the resources to do what they should be doing. It means that the rest of us have to pay more taxes. We'll be right back.